Hello everyone. Something about this course interested you and now you are watching the first video. Let me explain first of all why you should keep going and what you are going to learn. First off, why code? Coding is now a universal skill. And I think coding should be added to the curriculum even at the high school level. It should go along with reading, writing and arithmetic. This is the new world. In the new world, we want to understand how to properly express algorithms. Algorithms that can run on a computer. This is absolutely a critical skill you are going to be using in the new world. But now, why this course? Well, probably the best reason is we have designed this course for everyone. If you are an aspiring computer scientist, you will benefit. You will get a rigorous introduction to concepts such as syntax and operator precedence. And then you will be able to move on to something like more advanced programming. On the other hand, if you are another kind of scientist, a biologist or a chemi chem chemist or an ecologist, then you want to be able to code all sorts of functions so that you can model scientific theories. Finally, if you are a humanist, you are going to learn how algorithms work and you are going to be able to do things like get the computer to write poetry. So, this is for everyone. Everyone will have an opportunity to work on a problem that comes from a domain that motivates them. And the essential skills such as understanding how to write a loop will be universally taught but then you will be able to practice in an environment in which you are comfortable in a problem-solving environment appropriate to your background and your interests. Now, the next question arises that why the coding language C and not Java or Python or Pascal? There are many, many introductory courses for these other languages. These other languages are in many ways suitable for teaching beginning programming and there is nothing wrong with starting with another language or coming over from another language. But even if you had a start in Python or Java, you'll appreciate learning C. C was invented by Dennis Ritchie at Bell Labs in 1972. And it's a tried and true language used throughout industry. It's what's called a systems implementation language. A cell with my approach to see you're going to learn low level details. A lot of these other languages like Java or Python hide some of these details which partly make it easier. But then if you want to move on and learn more on understanding of deep level what is being done by the computer, you need to be able to program a code in a language like C, which is near the bare metal, near the computer and gives you that level of understanding. I think you're going to keep going with this course. You'll have detailed video lectures in which I will de demonstrate the principles and procedures of C. I'm looking forward to seeing what all of you, whether you had a lot of experience or none at all, will learn to do with C. So now let's discuss what coding is, what is C language, C++ language and all of that. So first of all, coding is talking to the computer or giving instructions to the computer in a language that the computer understands. Now, what is a language or what exactly is a computer language? So language can be anything like English or Hindi. 
which can be used to communicate if you want to communicate with another person right so we we pass some instructions using a particular language for communicating with any person in the same way if we want to communicate with the computer if we want to give the instructions to the computer we are going to use the computer language now there are several types of computer languages that exist for example c c++ python java and many more languages so for this course we are going to learn c and c++ and as we know that if we want to communicate in any language whether it be english only we need to follow some instructions of that language for example if i want to communicate in english if i want to frame a sentence it should be grammatically correct there are some rules in english that need to be followed for the other person to understand similarly computer languages have their own rules have their own instructions so that we can talk to the computer easily now with the help of computer languages we can develop certain applications so applications are broadly divided into two categories one is stand alone and the other is web applications stand alone applications are the ones that must be installed for example vlc or ms office or chrome all of them must be installed in the device before using them on the other hand web applications need not be installed for example facebook website or maybe gmail ircdc there is no need to install these web applications then for stand alone applications they must be compatible for the operating system and the stand alone application is compatible for single operating system while for web applications they are independent to operating system okay now what does compatible for operating system mean let us see what file extensions are first of all so for example there is a file abc.txt can we open this file on vlc the answer is no similarly if there is another file xyz.mp3 so can we open this file in notepad the answer is again no why because these applications these stand alone applications can only entertain some file extensions a particular file extension for example abc.txt can be opened in notepad and not in vlc similarly there are os extensions too for example windows is compatible only with .exe extensions then mac for mac we have .dmg and for linux we have several extensions like .rpm .tar and all mac will reject mac operating system will reject compatibility with .exe files and show compatibility error
Okay. So now let's consider a simple code for addition. A equals to 10, B equals to 20 and C is equals to A plus B and then print C and semicolon. This is the source code. This piece of code is called the source code that a programmer can understand. And let's name this file as app.c. .c is the extension for a C program programmable file. Now, we need to compile this code. As the source code is understandable only by the programmer, and for the computer to understand this code, it needs to be compiled as the com as the computer understands only the binary instructions. So, we are passing this source code to the compiler to get the compiled code which a machine can understand. Now, this compiler is just a program, is just a software that is installed in a certain type of computer or operating system. Let us consider it is installed in Windows. So, when it converts this source code to a machine understandable file, it will be .exe extension for Windows that is the exe executable file. Now, to run this file, we have again many operating systems. But this file will only be compatible with Windows operating system because .exe file is not compatible with Mac OS or Linux or any other operating system. Similarly, if the compiler was installed in a Mac operating system, then it will get converted to .dmg file and can only be run on, an, on a Mac operating system. So this was about the platform dependency in C. Now let's move further.